Hey guys, I'm Billy with Spec Train. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about uh, traveling and specifically flying with firearms. This is a video I've put off for quite a while because there's actually quite a few good videos out there already on the old YouTubes uh, talking about exactly how to do this. However, I still run into people that think it's way more difficult than it is. I get a lot of questions about it. I was with somebody at a match um, just a couple weeks ago that had traveled, you know, from down, actually out of the country, from out of Canada to be down in Alabama for a match. And it was just like, man, I didn't really even know you could, you could fly with firearms. Um, and it, there's still, I think, a need for some of this information to be put out there. Additionally, I'm going to talk about some of the differences in how I pack and the different luggage and so forth that I use for traveling just with EDC gear, or maybe I'm traveling to a match or whether I'm traveling to a class, because for me, those three things are very different. And the way I'm going to kind of pack things out is pretty different. Additionally, I've got some tips and tricks that I use that I haven't seen really anyone else putting out yet um, that help me get through airports and security clearance, I feel like a lot more smoothly. So hopefully some of this stuff, stuff is helpful for you guys. Number one, understand as far as the rules and regs go, make sure you're checking that stuff. You're getting on the TSA website. You're checking with the airline you're flying with as well. Um, and just those, those rules are in plain English. Check those out for yourself. Um, they do change from time to time and you need to stay up to date with that. Um, additionally, I'm not going to be able to tell you the rules for every single airline that you fly with. Every single airline is a little bit different. You know, I pretty much travel with, with one airline the vast majority of the time. And so I know their rules inside out and backwards. But if I'm going to travel on another airline, I just go to their website. I check out the rules and make sure that the way I normally do stuff is in compliance with their rule set. So make sure you're aware of those things for yourself. With that said, we're not going to go through every single rule. I'm going to try to give you the basics on the rules. I'm going to tell you the ones that I definitely respect 100% of the time. I'm going to tell you a couple rules that I kind of skirt around, and I'll explain that when we get there. Um, and, and just some of the things that I do that make traveling you know, a little bit easier for me. Let's start with the scenario of, hey, man, I'm just going to a place. I want to take my EDC gear with me, maybe a pistol or maybe two tops. Um, and I don't need, you know, a full gun case, Pelican, whatever it is with me. I'm just bringing, you know, my gun and maybe my carry ammo. And I want to figure out how to get that there with me. How do I do that? Well, first of all, obviously you can't take it on the plane with you. You have to put it in checked baggage. The only rules essentially for your firearm is A, it has to be in a locked hard sided case that prevents access to the firearm, even when it's going in a checked bag. Any place on this that there is a place for a lock, there has to be a lock. So in this one, as an example, there's two holes right here for locks to go on this case. There's no reason that I have to put a lock in each one. It doesn't do anything for me, but that is the rules. I have to have a lock in each one. I bring that up in case you're, you know, flying with one like an old Pelican Storm case, something like that, that has, you know, maybe four, five, six different slots on it for locks to go. You're going to have to have a lock in every single one. So some of the cases that only have two at the most are really nice. Um, I just like to travel with a small hard sided case like this. The point of this case, again, for me is just obeying the rules. I'm not, it's, I'm not trying to get like the most heavy duty secure cases out there. Uh, number one, those are heavy. And of course I'm working with the weight limits, but also like if someone in TSA or someone in, in the baggage service for your airline, like wants to steal your gun, all they have to do guys is take this case and walk away with it, right? That's all they have to do. Um, and so they're going to be able to get into pretty much any kind of case like this eventually. Um, having a really heavy duty case is not really going to do anything for you in my opinion. So I like a small hard uh, case like so. Pretty much all I'm going to put in here, me personally, is my guns, right? So I've got, you know, a full gun in here and a spare upper um, from, the, from the last trip that I just took. And this is the kind of case that I would, would typically roll with if I'm just traveling with my EDC. I'm not going to put magazines in here. I'm not going to put ammo in here at all. Just guns, right? Um, this is going to get locked up and it's going to get chucked into whatever bag or piece of luggage that I'm usually carrying with, but it is going to have to be a checked bag. Okay. Um, let's talk about ammo really quickly. The rules from TSA is that it has to be inside of a factory box or inside of a magazine actually uh, is okay as well, according to TSA. Now, factory boxes. In other words, you cannot buy, you know, a, a can of ammo like this with a bunch of loose ammo in it and throw it in your bag. Can't do that. You have to have it in some kind of container that has a some kind of separator in it like these plastic trays that are very common in your ammo boxes that keep each cartridge separate. Essentially what they're worried about is ammo jostling around, 
you know, what tip of one bullet runs into a primer from another causes some kind of ignition. Not very realistic, but still that's what they're worried about. Okay. So you have to have it in something that keeps it separate. You can also use little cases that, um, you know, like reloaders use that kind of thing, little plastic hinge lid cases. It just has to keep every single cartridge separate. That's the main thing. It does not have to, your ammo does, it doesn't have to be in the original boxes your ammo came in, right? So in other words, I have a stash of these federal boxes that I use. And so even if I'm traveling with reloads or whatever kind of ammo I'm traveling with, I just simply load it into these cases and I roll like that, right? Now, there's a big difference between rules that are TSA rules and rules that are from your airline. Completely separate sets of rules, right? TSA is going to scan your case, whatever, any case that has a bag in it, they're gonna x-ray it and they're gonna look in that bag and they may actually inspect that bag in detail to make sure you're complying with all of their rules. Airline rules are a little bit different in that the airline does have rules um, that are separate and additional to TSA for how they want you to travel with firearms on their airline. Some of those are pretty reasonable, some of those definitely are not. Um, the funny thing is that the airline is actually not permitted to inspect your bag legally. Um, so they're not gonna be x-raying it, they're not gonna be digging through it, anything like that. They may ask to see it at the counter and you may have to kind of open it up and show it to them. Um, but the point being is there are a couple airline rules that I skirt around a little bit. One of those is with ammo, right? So typically um, most of the airlines do not want you to travel with loaded magazines, um, but it's totally fine to do so, right? If I have magazines, I'll just simply have those in some kind of like an internal compartment of my bag, maybe inside of a smaller bag, like I'll show you that I have inside my Pelican case. And I will just simply tell the airline that I don't have any ammo and it's totally fine it's never been an issue for me one time or another. So just be aware of that. Um, if you're trying to follow every single rule, don't load your magazines if you're traveling with American Airlines or some of the other airlines have an issue with it. Um, but you know, if you're traveling every single week with guns, like you're gonna get tired of that. Um, I like to keep all my magazines loaded. And so uh, I typically travel with loaded magazines and it's, it's never ever been an issue for me. Um, with that said, another airline rule is going to be with regards to the weight of your ammunition. Most of the domestic uh, airlines here in the States have a limit of 11 pounds of ammunition you're allowed to have with you, which of course is not sufficient for a class, anything like that. Um, so we'll talk about that when I get to the, uh, my, my case here. But again, I will typically just tell them I don't have ammo and I'll put as much ammo in my bag as I want to and it's just not an issue. I'll talk more about that when we get to the, the, the traveling for matches and, and so forth. But for right now, if I was just traveling with my carry ammo, I would feel totally comfortable loading my carry mags, you know, putting them in an internal pocket of my bag and saying I'm not traveling with ammo and it's just not gonna be an issue. The process when you arrive at the airport, right? You're simply gonna take your bag. You're not gonna go to the kiosk. You're not gonna try to pay for bags early, anything like that. You're just gonna take your bags up to the air counter at the airline and say, hey, I'm checking a bag or two bags or however many bags you have, and I need to declare a firearm. You're not gonna say, hey, I have a gun. You say, hey, I need to declare a firearm. That's kind of the terminology you wanna use. They're gonna know exactly what you're talking about and direct you to the right person. They're gonna ask you which bag it's in. I'll be like, hey, it's in this bag right here. From there on, just don't do anything that the, the airline attendant does not tell you to do. The process is different pretty much every single time by some metric, they, everyone has their own little process and really the airline people have a very different understanding of their own rules sometimes and what is or is not required, okay? Um, my recommendation, this is not a time to try to fight for your rights. These are not the people that are writing the rules, making the rules. This is simply a person who probably doesn't really understand the rules and stands between you and you making your flight on time. So generally I try to go through whatever I can to make it as smooth and easy as a process for that person. And even if they ask me to do something they're not allowed to ask for, I typically just comply with that and I make my flight, right? So that's just kind of uh, my little tip on that, right? Generally what's gonna happen is they're gonna ask to see your case. So I would pull the case now um, out of my luggage and I would typically just you know, set it on top or wherever is convenient. I, I typically have mine locked already. This is not a requirement. You could have it you know, unlocked with the, lock, the locks just handy. Um, they're gonna ask you if your firearm's unloaded and you're gonna say, of course, yes, it's unloaded. They're not allowed to inspect your bag, again. So they're, they're not supposed to ask to see your firearms or do any kind of inspection 
Under no circumstances would I let anyone from the airline handle my firearms. I would ask for TSA at that point if they ever wanted to do that. Um, but sometimes they will ask you to open up your case and let them see, which I'm happy to do. Typically, they're looking to see if a magazine is in the gun. There's not allowed to be a magazine in the gun, even though we all know that it can still be loaded or unloaded. There's not allowed to be a magazine in the gun. So that's what they're normally looking for. I've had one airline attendant ask me to actually pull the slide back on my gun to see if there was a round in the chamber. That's pretty sketchy. You know, if it's, if it's a rifle or something, I am not going to pick up an AR-15 in an airport. I'm just not going to do that. I would say, hey, if you want to inspect the firearm, I'm just going to ask you to call for TSA and have them do it because I'm not going to handle my firearms here in the airport. In this particular example, right, it was, it was this exact setup. I technically have two guns here. The airline attendant, of course, didn't even know what this was. Um, that doesn't look like a firearm to most people. And so all I simply did was like reach in, pull the slide back a little bit and let it close. And they were like, okay, right? Once they're, they're satisfied, they're gonna give you a card that looks like this. It says firearms unloaded. They're gonna write some of their information on here and they'll ask you to sign the card. This is simply a declaration saying that your firearms are in fact unloaded if I hold that the right way up, okay? And you're gonna take that card and again, depending on who it is, you may have to put it in a different spot. Um, they may ask, actually ask you to put it inside your case and close the lid. They may want you to put it on top of the case, inside of your luggage. A little bit different every single time, okay? Um, regardless, you're gonna sign that card, you're going to close your case at that point, you're gonna lock it, and you're gonna put it back in your luggage, secure it appropriately, and you're just gonna go from there. That's really it. Now, what happens after that? They're gonna take your luggage, they're gonna take kind of possession of your luggage at that point, and one of two things is gonna happen depending on the airport. They may take it and put it on the conveyor belt that sends it back to TSA, and you're never gonna see that bag again until you get to your destination. In that case, what you want to do is wait around outside the luggage kind of desk there for about 15, 20 minutes. The reason being, if TSA scans your bag and sees an issue and feels they have to inspect it, they're going to want to unlock that case. And of course, they don't have keys to it. You're specifically not supposed to use TSA locks to prevent people that have those keys from accessing it without your permission. So you're not supposed to use those locks. But in the event that they need to access it, they're gonna give you a call, right? You have to have your name and phone number. You know, I usually have a business card in this front slot or somewhere on my bag. I obviously have a business card on the front of my case over here um, with my phone number and so forth. They're gonna give you a call, say, hey, we need access to it. And you need to be handy to provide your keys. If you're already through security or whatever, you're gonna have to come now back out and go back through, this is a big pain. So add 15, 20 minutes into your, you know, backwards planning to get there in time and just wait around and see if they call you. If they don't, just go ahead. The other process that can happen sometimes is you have to actually accompany your bag to the TSA location. Um, Atlanta is an example of this. There's, there's several like that where you'll go over the counter and then they'll actually call for either, they're either gonna call for someone from TSA or they'll assign someone from your airline to take your bag to the TSA scan point and when you get there, you know, TSA in front of it, in front of you will essentially take it into a little room, put it through the x-ray scanner, and they'll give you a thumbs up or thumbs down like your bag's good to go, and you can leave from there. Now, typically, in that, in that case, someone from the airline, again, is going to have to take your bag back up to the counter and make sure that it gets back on the conveyor belt. I would usually accompany my bag for that process because just who knows? I want to see it make its way to the conveyor belt personally. You don't have to accompany it though. So those are kind of the, the but that's, that's as easy as it is. Now, when you get to your destination, they're not supposed to put your bag with the firearm in the normal bag clean conveyor belt. Um, it's supposed to be taken under supervision directly to the airline baggage office and you're supposed to be able to claim it there after showing your ID. You never know what's gonna happen, right? I would say for me, um, at least 80% of the time, it ends up in the baggage office, uh, and the other 20%, it comes out on the, on the on the regular bag claim carousel. Typically, I'm flying, if I'm flying with firearms for a class or something, I'm flying with at least two check bags. And so I will always go to bag claim, wait for my main bag to come out. Once it gets there, I'll wait and kind of see if the gun comes out or not. If it does, just take it and leave. You're good to go. If it doesn't, go to your airline baggage office, say, hey, I should have a, pa a package to pick up or, or a piece of luggage to pick up. We'll ask to see your ID. It'll give you the, your bag or your case, 
and you're good to go. So that's kind of the basic process for it if you're not aware, if you're not familiar. And that's just the simple process I would use for flying with firearms if I'm just trying to take my EDC with me, okay? Now let's talk about a little bit of a different loadout if I'm gonna be traveling for a class somewhere I'm traveling with rifles and pistols um, for a multiple day shooting event, lots of ammo, that kind of stuff. That's where a case like this is really, really handy. Now, I could, right, use a dedicated gun case, right? Something that actually has like compression foam on, on the guns, maybe custom pluck foam. Uh, I see a lot of guys doing this. You can usually get Pelican cases that are big enough to put maybe two rifles in, and maybe a handgun or two in there. And it really does a great job of protecting your guns. I never use those. And then there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, it's very obviously a gun case. That's suboptimal in my book. Number two, I travel with work guns not like you know custom bolt guns or that kind of stuff so i don't really care if my guns get banged around a little bit and then number three that's a whole bag in other words however many bags you're taking with you if you're not paying for bags you're still only allowed to take up to two bags if you are paying for your check bags you're paying for that bag obviously and you're also paying or reserving that weight allotment so you're allowed to have it to 50 or 70 pounds depending on how often you fly and so forth in that piece of luggage. And if you just have your guns there, you're gonna be nowhere close to it. It's a waste of that weight allotment. And usually I'm traveling with enough gear and ammo that every pound kind of matters. So I like a case like this, where I can put my guns in here, secure it, but I can also put enough other gear in there that I have to bring with me anyway, um, that it works out. For a class, I also kind of use this as my range bag, right? So I will take this, this case onto the range and I will work out of this case for the day. So I want it to be big enough where everything I need for the day can pretty much be in this case. That's my preference. Uh, I posted this in our Spectrum alumni group that I was making this video. One of the questions I got was on stickers, right? So me personally, um, I don't slather stick gun related stickers all over the outside of my case. Um, just don't prefer to do that. I prefer not to let everyone know that I'm traveling with guns and I don't really care if random people in the airport think I'm cool or not, right? So I don't do that. I don't really, that's one of the least interesting things for me to discuss, uh, but just for what it's worth. I have, I originally had just this one little sticker right here. Maybe kind of see it's a small spec train logo. It blends in, it fits in this track really well. Doesn't stand out. It was just for me to be able to identify it easier. I now have this big uh, Catch Co sticker on here. It's kind of a fishing related sticker. Again, not related to firearms. Again, it helps me spot it and know that this is my case really easily without broadcasting the world what's in here. Again, if, if people know and are looking for it, they're probably gonna see this case and know that it's, it is what it is. This is a Pelican 1615 air case. You do not have to get a Pelican. You can get cheaper cases for folks that are traveling pretty much all the time. Pelican is pretty much what we're gonna use. They're heavy duty, they're strong. They do a great job. They have great wheels. They have great carry handles. They, they handle a ton of weight. And they're just really, really good, good cases. I would highly recommend them to you. The air cases do a great job of being super strong while also being light with enough weight that they're practical enough to take on airplanes. And they only have the two lock hasps, which is, which is very convenient as well. So here's kind of how I have my Pelican laid out. And I would have this pistol case right here. Now it's perfectly legal and perfectly in compliance with all the airlines regulations for me to just have a case like this and to just throw guns in here, right? I could have a gun up in one of these pouches. I could have rifles laying across the top. All that's fine because it's still in a hard-sided container that's locked. However, this is one of those issues where as much as I fly, um, I've ran into issues with this several times where for whatever reason, somehow the airline attendants have this idea that you can't have loose guns in your case. They have to be secured in kind of you know, custom cut foam or whatever, and you can't have gear mixed in with your guns. This is one of these situations where I'm gonna do something I'm not required to, just to make sure it's not a hassle for me and I can make my flight no issue. So what I literally do, right, I'll show you in a second, I have rifles hidden in the bottom of this case, and I still put this pistol case on top in plain view with locks on this case and locks on my outside Pelican case. And I just tell the airline people about this gun. They don't ever really like interrogate you, but I lead them to believe there's only guns in this little case right here. And I put this card, if they want it inside the case, inside this case right here. They're very happy with that. 
I close it up, send it back to TSA. TSA scans it, sees guns everywhere, doesn't care, right? TSA does not care as long as it's secured and not loaded. And so everyone's happy that way and it makes life a little bit easier for me. So I'll show you exactly how I have this uh, laid out. So in the bottom of the case, like I just said, I have my pistol case with at least one pistol in it. I may have other pistols in here somewhere, but I'll have at least one pistol. I will also have whatever belt over here that I'm gonna be uh, rolling with, as, along with everything else that I need. There's random stuff, you know, I have like speakers for classes and stuff like that. You may not need that. Um, I've got a DACA pouch here with, you know, all my cleaning kit and kind of weapons maintenance stuff in one of these little DACA pouches. These are great, I've got several of these in here. These are really cool because they're waterproof, right? They typically don't have as much volume. They're, they're kind of almost like made like in an envelope style. So they don't have as much volume as a bag like this does, but it's great for when I'm out on the range in the rain, it keeps my stuff totally dry, which is really, really nice. And if you're traveling with any kind of liquids, it also prevents if any of that spills or leaks from getting in, into anything else, which is again, really nice. So this is my kind of little cleaning kit. This is all gonna change, guys, depending on what I'm traveling for, what I need. I'm just gonna give you some ideas of, of what I use for organization and what it kind of holds. Here's one of the Magpul uh, takeout pouches. In here I have, you know, a hat cam case. I've got some spare uh, swordens and PPE in here, okay? So that's what I have in this case. Um, in this case right here, I have uh, actually magazines this time around, right? So I've got, you know, probably eight to 10 pistol mags in here, as well as, you know, three or four rifle mags. Again, I may or may not be traveling with these loaded. These, this would definitely be in this case by the time I'm going to the range. If I have a weight issue, I would almost always put my ammo in a separate checked bag. I'll talk about that more in a second when it comes to ammo. Then I have one of these. This is from Extreme Tactical Gear. It's one of their uh, burrito pouches. In here, I have a bunch of holsters and, and holster-related stuff. So I've got, you know, my EDC holster, right? I've got a spare universal concealed carry holster with a spare surefire weapon light in here. In case someone's holster in class goes down or is just not sufficient, I've got a holster in here from Filster that anybody can use. Same thing with the MSP holster, but th this is mine. This is what I use. This is an old one that I have I let students use. I've also got, you know, another belt holster. So I've got my competition holster on here right now. If I need a duty style holster, I have that. So this is just a, a bag that works really well for me to kind of organize holsters and that kind of stuff. Um, now, under here, right? What I have is just a layer of one inch foam. I'm, I'm gonna link to all this guys, as far as how I have my the accessories, how I have the box laid out, all that stuff's gonna be linked below if you need it. Um, this is just basic foam I get off Amazon. You can buy foam, obviously it's custom made for these boxes. If you get like the little organizers and stuff, it just really cuts down on the volume in your case. Additionally, for me, the foam, I don't really care to have foam all the way around the outside edges. That's not super important for me. I just want foam in here to give me some layering, to hide my rifles in the bottom from the airline, and also it helps with compression. So in other words, if I stack the stuff in here to be a little bit loose and kind of rattle around more, but with two layers of foam, it gives me some compression ability where I kind of sit on the, on the lid when I'm closing it, it keeps everything from banging around which is nice. So I've got a layer of foam here. And then in the bottom, I've got my rifles. So I've got a 10 inch, a 10.5. You can put up to, I would say, probably an 11.5 in the in this case, straight in a 1615. Uh, as long as you have the stock collapsed, it fits in there. You don't even need to fold it or have a folder on here for that to fit. And then I've got a spare 16 inch upper for obviously, you know, a different kind of work. Um, Typically, if I'm running with multiple rifles, I will just bring one lower and I'll swap out uppers, you know, if I need to. Um, so that's typically what I do as far as traveling with those rifles. Up here, I've got a bunch of different organizers. I've done this different ways, right? So what I started with was actually one of these zipper style organizers uh, you guys may have seen before. These work out really well. Um, there's a couple gripes that I have with it. Uh, number one, a lot of times these pouches are just like not exactly the right size for the stuff that I want to put in here. And there's nothing you can do about that. Number two, the kind of back plastic on here is weak enough that if you put like heavy stuff in here and you're using it all the time, it, it wallows out the plastic and ends up falling out in your box. And you have to use like big washers to secure it and stuff. Um, and there's just no modularity. You just have to kind of repack these every time. So what I've started doing is I made a Velcro board on the back of here. So what I actually have is a big piece 
of like one eighth inch plywood essentially. It's lightweight, heavy duty you know, stuff that I've screwed into the lid. I've got strips of six inch Velcro on here. Again, I'm gonna link this stuff. Um, everything's up for the plywood. You gotta get that from Lowe's or something. But, uh, and then I use these uh, Vertex or other, depending on what I'm hauling, other Velcro pouches that I can slap on here, right? So now I can change things out depending on what I'm going and what I need. I've got different pouches that I can keep organized and kind of swap them out as I need them. It gives me some modularity. If I need to, you know, take a pouch and rip it off and take it down range and work on somebody's gun or something, I can do that as well. All of that is really, really nice. So I like these Vertex pouches quite a bit, or, you know, again, any Velcro organizer pouch will work fine. Now, again, what I have in here is gonna be different from what you maybe need, but just to give you some ideas, right? These are the Vertex medium ones. This is my kind of swag pouch. So I've got, you know, patches and stickers and stuff like that in here. Um, in here, I've got timers. So in this medium pouch, I have three timers. I've got one Shooters Global and I've got two pack timers in here. Um, all that fits really well. Over here, I've got, it's literally an entire case of markers and paint pens uh, for classes. Down here on the end, this is where I keep all of my locks. And I also keep an Apple AirTag um, in this pouch right here. Just helps keep track of the case, right? Where, wherever it goes, I got a good idea. Um, I like that product quite a bit, works out pretty well. Don't have to pay like a subscription fee like you would for like a real GPS tracker. And it works in my opinion a lot better than some of the other things like Tile or whatever. They just don't have an extensive network. So I like the AirTags quite a bit. Um, this pouch over here, this is kind of my optics bag. So I've actually got two magnifiers. Um, I've actually got a spare X300 in here and I've got a spare red dot, right? I, you know, one is none, two is one type deal. I like to have extras for things. Um, so that's my optics pouch. Um, this is actually an entire pouch. This is the Vertex large pouches, by the way. These are the small pouches. Um, this is an entire pouch with grip stuff. So I've got some Petzl in here. I've got a couple things of Pro Grip down there. I'm always losing and misplacing those. So I've got plenty of um, grip enhancer stuff in that pouch. Down here, I've got PPE. So in this large pouch, I've got one of the large face shield style glass cases from Oakley with multiple lenses and all that kind of thing fits in there just fine. And then I've got my two sets of rechargeable ear pro in here. And I've got one of the, you know, collapsible rags and stuff for changing out my sunglass lenses. And then down here on the end, it's kind of tools. So I've got a rifle uh, cleaning kit with rods and like a punch rod in case I ever need to remove a, a case for somebody or something like that. I've got a, a multitasker and I've got one of the DACA cans from Magpul. And in here I keep like a lot of my liquid stuff. So I've got a big thing of gel, um, Loctite. I've also got some of my syringes with lube in there. Anything that really I don't want crushed or squeezed because it might link, leak, I keep in one of these cans and that works out really well for me. So that's kind of the first loadout I wanted to show you guys. Um, now let's talk about ammo really quickly before we move on to the next part. So in this case, I may be traveling with rifle and or pistol ammo for this kind of a course. Typically for me, all of this gear will fit in here and be right at about 50 pounds. So if you don't have the 70 pound uh, achievement unlocked, then you're probably just gonna have one case with gear if you're traveling with a similar loadout. Um, ammo is pretty heavy, right? Especially if you're traveling with a lot more than 11 pounds of it. Um, so due to the inspection process, the airline process, all that kind of thing. What I prefer to do personally is I'll have, I will not put ammo, any ammo at all in this case, right? Um, number one for weight, like we just mentioned. The other thing is this, the number one reason that TSA would need to actually inspect your bag is if they cannot tell for sure if your guns are unloaded. So they're gonna x-ray this box and they're gonna try to look in the chamber of each weapon and make sure there's not a round in the chamber anywhere. What could cause them to not be able to see that? It's pretty simple. If I've got my, you know, my pistol case or my rifles or whatever it is, and I've got a box of ammo sitting on top of that chamber, that causes a pretty weird image for them. And they're like, there's, there's ammo there and I can't tell for sure if it's in the chamber or not on the x-ray, right? That's when they need to break into your case. So far, I've never ever once had TSA want to look into this case when there was no ammo in there. Not once. Just makes it a lot more simple. Nothing gets broken. TSA is known for breaking stuff, optics on guns, different things like that. 
Um, and so that's really nice. I try to avoid that, right? So I typically travel with no ammo in this case. Once I get to my destination, I'll put my ammo in here, obviously. But while I'm traveling, the ammo typically is not in here, okay? Now, with that said, let me show you uh, another loadout if I'm traveling with like a match, a little bit different. All right, this is another way that I travel with this same Pelican case, and it works a lot better for me in certain situations. Specifically for me, if I'm traveling for like a pistol, a USB-SA match, I don't need rifles. I do need a range bag um, because it's not very convenient to haul this big case, you know, up and down all the bays at a match, and I don't need that much stuff for the match. Everything I pretty much need can fit in this range bag. So I like to have a range bag with me. And, and so what I typically like to do is just put my range bag with all my gun stuff inside of the Pelican with my guns, okay? For this, I specifically like the Safari Land backpacks a lot because they fit in this case pretty much perfectly, um, which is really, really nice for taking advantage of that space, but it, it also just fits in this case really well. Um, what I will typically do is I will have my pistol case still, on, still, still down here on the end, still locked, same thing as before. Uh, I'll have whatever I need to fit down here. Right now I've got a couple pair of like cleats or, or whatever I need to fit down in this end of the case. My gun belt, I will wrap around this bag. So you can kind of maybe even not see it right now, but around this bag is wrapped my gun belt. To make that work, what I do, and this is one of the things I really like about the ELS belt system, I take all these pouches off and put them in one of these pouches so that it will actually fit around this backpack kind of in between the wall and the and the and the and the uh, the bag itself. That's how tight of a fit it is, which is really really nice. So I'll wrap my gun belt around the range bag, and I got the range bag here. Now you'll notice the bag is a little bit taller than the bottom section of this case. So I kind of have two options. I can either take these pouches out, right, and put them down in the box or somewhere else so that the lid will actually close. Or if this bag is not totally filled up there is kind of a wooden um, stiffener in the top of this ammo garage bay thing in the bottom of this bag that I can take out and then the bag will kind of squish down a little bit and fit with these pouches, but I kind of have to do one or the other. And then the whole thing closes and that's how I roll um, with uh, to, to matches and that kind of stuff typically, right? Again, I would typically have another check bag that has my ammo in it, my clothes, everything else I need for that event, and, uh, and I do that. Typically, guys, you know, I get two free bags. I, I fly so much. So, again, you figure out a system that works well for you. This is just what works well for me for classes and matches and that kind of thing. And uh, a couple different ways that, that I've been been rolling so far. I never had an issue with TSA. Um, since I switched to start using the small pistol case deal, never had an issue with the airline either. Um, so it works out. It works out really well for me. Hopefully guys, that was helpful for you on kind of how to fly and travel with firearms. If you have any questions, um, feel free to drop those below and we'll make a follow-up video if we need to or I'll try to answer those directly. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks. It's weird. It is. I didn't, it is I didn't weird. know it's, that it's, I was I was fascinated. <laughs> I'm about to go rip out my right contract <laughs> and try it out. It's pretty, yeah, yeah, I'm it's like pretty, looking uh, at an airsoft gun right now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty fascinating stuff. I, I'm interested in exploring it. Hey, just to, uh, under there is no scope shadow to worry about. There's no eye relief to worry about. It has infinite eye relief, so I can mount it anywhere on the rifle that I want. And eye relief's not going to be an issue. It's also very forgiving in terms of throwing the rifle up in front of my eye. And as long as that dot's in that window somewhere, you can just use it. You don't have to have your face in the exact right 